Hello there, welcome to Rajiv Gandhi IAS Academy and this is me Nawazish Nihal and today I will be representing you daily news analysis for 4th January 2022. So moving on with the first news, the first news is about the Chinese construction on the Pangong and China is trying to make a bridge on the Pangong Lake and it will bridge down the it will minimize their time gap between two points and it will significantly bring down the people's liberation Ar army that is pla to move tro troops and equipment between the two sectors and the bridge is located around 25 kilometer ahead of the lac that is line of actual control and india holds about we all know that about one third of 135 kilometer long boomerang shaped lake with that uh, whole Pingong Lake, uh, Pingong So Lake, and it is located at an altitude of about 1400 feet. So, these are basic information. And we all know that in February 2020, there was this uh, disengagement happened between India and uh, China at the Pangong So Lake. So, moving on with this uh, news and this lake. So, where is this lake actually? This is like the actual shape of the lake that uh, it's a, a narrow gap is there and also a wide gap is there and uh, there was this at uh, this LAC is right here and this whole portion is uh, like in India and uh, this whole portion is from China but uh, still China is trying to take some root of uh, Pangong Lake and take some control of lake and it is lo located in like Eastern Ladakh Eastern Ladakh it is located and most famously during the Doklam standoff a, a video was surfaced about this Pangong Saw lake and this lake became famous and uh, Pangong Saw is a like long narrow long narrow shaped lake and it is very deep in nature and it is indoor hick what is this indoor hick see those kind of water bodies which are landlocked or those kind of lake which are landlocked are known as indirect so we are also covering the geography part over here so indirect lake are landlocked lake suppose a question is asked that uh, which kind of lake is pangong so if we are knowing that indirect lake so we will know that uh, pangong is a indirect lake and also the western end of so lies 54 kilometer to the southeast of lay and uh, southeast of lay and the 135 kilometer long leg is sprawl over about 604 square kilometer so this is total about uh, 604 square kilometer in the shape of a boomerang as i have said that the, uh, look this must be looking like a shape of boomerang so like a shape of boomerang it is and uh, in winter it uh, used to freeze and uh, in uh, yeah, it's ideal for ice skating and polo so for tourism purpose this is also a good place but still we know that there are tension happening between india and china so tourists are not that in much into pangong so lake so what is the tactical significance of the lake so this lake lies in the path of chusul and this chusul is a uh, very important because as we know when 1962 war happened the battleground was at chusul and one of the main approaches that china can use for an offensive indian territory is through chusul only and we all know that this pangong so lake this lake lies in the way of chusul so controlling it is a major kind of uh, challenge for india and also very important for india and uh, during the 1962 war, this was where China launched its main offensive and the Indian army fought heroically at Rizang La Pass was there. Okay, and uh, in this mountain pass on the southeastern part of Chusul. So this is towards the southeastern part of Chusul. So it was here and Ahir company was there in the 62 war. So this is just uh, for a basic knowledge that uh, these were things which happened in the 62 war. But uh, we have to make sure that uh, Chusul is in our mind because uh, whenever we are writing main sensor we can bring up this point that uh, pangong so is important for us due to this place okay and uh, it is also connectivity of the reason is also important because uh, china have built a, their motorable road okay in which they can heavy vehicle can be brought up onto that roads on the banks of pangong so like at the people's liberation army we, 
base it as close to that sound west of inch one so this much in important that information are not needed but it points to the importance according to the chinese by the area and uh, even during peace time the difference in perception over the lse lies on the northern bank so as i have seen here yeah, this is the southern bank of pangong so this is the northern bank so in the northern bank most of the uh, activities are happening from the chinese side and in 1999 army unit from area was moved to kargil because uh, kargil war was happening so when kargil was happening uh, the army were moved from uh, pangong to the kargil part and uh, we know operation vijay was happening in kargil so at uh, when operation vijay was happening <coughs> sorry for that china took this opportunity and built about five kilometer of road inside indian territory so inside india china made about five kilometer of road when this uh, operation vijay was happening so uh, this was a major setback for india and uh, from one of these rows china's position physically overlook indian position okay mm, so from the northern part of the pangong so lake it means this part of the pangong so lake chinese position is ahead of the indian position so we have to make sure that china are moved back to their to the lac which is here so this is a whole about this pangong so lake and uh, why it is important for india so moving on uh, with the chinese expansion see we all know that china is very much active on the south china sea so this whole area close to vietnam malaysia cambodia java sumatra this whole area come into china, south china sea and it has been reported that china is establishing new administrative district and for this kind of uh, there is this island which is known as sparty and parsonal sparty spartly and parasail archipelago these are archipelagos so china is also setting up new administrative district here and china has also named around 80 island in south china sea okay over geographical features in the sea and uh, claiming sovereignty over underwater features in this contested region so we all know that uh, see south china sea as we are seeing here is a uh, like a connection I mean, like from here australia is near from here india is near here russia is near so it's like close proximity to major world powers so if china is taking control of this world south china sea that will be a issue for rest of the world too and also we all know that uh, covid 19 was originated basically in china and china is been engaged in aggressive diplomacy with western countries which have sought clarity on the origin of covid 19 pandemic and it has crippled the world economy so whenever the aggressive diplomacy of china is concerned uh, we first we will mention the south china sea part so first we have to mention south china sea part and then we have also to mention the covid 19 origin part also because china was very aggressive when this covid 19 origin was happening and it was saying different countries that uh, uh, we all know that there was this tension between trump was there in usa so he told the covid vaccine uh, covid uh, as the chinese virus so this was their huge and cry in the chinese lobby and the countries backing china so we can expect what kind of expansionist policy china is applying so this was with this news so moving on with the next news so our vice president venkariya naidu had said in a meeting that uh, we do not have to indulge in hate speech and he was making this remarks on this uh, his visit to kotayam that is a district in kerala and uh, saint kuriyokos um, was a spiritual leader and uh, paying his visit to his uh, mausoleum he said this kind of thing and he is pressed his strong disapproval of the attempts to ridicule other religion and create dissociation in society and also he said that uh, the hate speech and writings are against the indian culture and heritage tradition and constitutional right and ethos also and uh, he also said that secularism in, in the blood of every india so we have to because these kind of a statement when uh, person at the high government position or the high constitutional position say something it becomes important for us because we we have seen that uh, upsc has this habit of playing around words and playing around things of the current affairs so what is this hate speech and what is uh, all these thing we have we will see in details 
so in general uh, hate speech uh, refers to the um, words whose intent is to create hatred so first is to create hatred towards a particular group okay to create hatred first is thing and that group may be a community religion race whatever the thing is and the speech may or may not be have some meaning but it is likely to result in violence so hate speech will result in violence if it is continued and also the police uh, bureau of police research and development bprd bureau of police research and development they also published a manual for investigation agency on cyber harassment that defined hate speech as a language that degenerates or insults or threatens kind of thing and also whenever we are discussing hate speech there is this 267th report of uh, law commission of india that become important whenever we are discussing hate speech because the reason is that a, it it uh, stated that hate speech is something which is used as a incitement to hatred primarily against a group of person defined in term of race we have to make sure that whatever what all things are con, uh, uh, concluded in here so the things which are here is the race ethnicity ethnicity gender sexual orientation sexual orientation religious belief religious belief all these thing so this 267th law commission report says that hate speech is stated as an incitement to hatred primarily against a group of person defined in terms of this kind of thing okay so and one of the greatest challenge is not to exercise the principle of autonomy and free speech because we all know that free speech is uh, like uh, in article 19 one we all know there is this free speech guaranteed as a fundamental right to every indian citizen but this free speech should not be used as a tool to propagate hate speech we have to make sure and what are the major reasons uh, for hate speech so the first reason which is there is that there is this feeling of superiority superiority feeling that individuals believe in stereotypes that are in, in, ingrained in their minds and these stereotypes lead them to believe that a class or group of person are inferior to them and as as such uh, cannot have the same right as them so when a person have this kind of mentality he is out to repeat some kind of hate speech so first we have to take control of this superiority feeling and also there is this stubbornness to particular ideology because the stubbornness to stick to a particular ideology without caring for the coexistence of every individual without co not just coexistence but peaceful coexistence uh, this kind of things add fire to the hate speech so when a person is stubborn to its ideology so there are we know there are different legal position of hate speech and there is this ipc different section of ipc are there for example there is this 153a is there 153b is there and these are concerned with punishment and also uh, there is this like uh, section 295a of ipc is there and it deals with the punishing act it deals with the act and it deals with the punisher so so these are the things about the ipc and also there is this representation act which is in a democratic society as of india there is this representation of people act and here it decide that how different political parties can run for this act basically defined if how different political parties can run off in election how an individual can run off election so in representation of people act also section 8 of this act prevents a person convicted of uh, illegal use of freedom of speech for contesting an election and different sections uh, are also there which bars the promotion of anonymity on the ground of different kind of race religion community and uh, these kind of things are there so what are the different suggestions which are there in ipc because two committees were being set up for maintaining this uh, Uh, hate speech thing about the ipc that uh, is there any suggestion which can be maintained to so first committee was this vishwanath committee which was set up in 2019 and it proposed inserting one section that is section 153c 
and this is also one section section 505a see these section answer are not important we just have to know that okay this was happening and this was basically for incitement to commit an offense for incitement also if someone is inciting something someone to commit an offense then uh, on grounds of religious race caste and the place of birth different kind of thing so if someone is inciting someone he should be booked under ipc and also it proposed a fine of about like uh, 5000 rupees and also this is uh, also 5000 rupees or he can be jailed up to 2 years so this was the rec major recommendation of viswanathan committee and also there is this uh, uh, bisbara committee and uh, bisbarua committee it basically proposed amendment of section 153 and uh, it's uh, said that it should be instead of this 2 years it should be punishable by 5 years and uh, fine or both of section 509a and uh, also punishable by three years or fine so basically base Barua committee extended the punishment period of this uh, vishwanathan committee so this was this about uh, the different suggestion for the ipc and what are the different case related to head speech so there was this uh, supreme court judgment also and in one of the recent judgment um, uh, the supreme court said uh, discussing the limits of free speech and what may tend to amount to free speech supreme court has recently held that historical truths historical truths must be depicted without in any way disclosing or encouraging hatred so we cannot just present something like okay this is historical truth we have to present it Supreme Court say it must be presented without disclosing or encouraging hatred or enmity. Okay, so this was the thing, and there is this also famous Sriya Shingal versus Union of Indian case. Whenever uh, we are discussing hate speech, we must have to bring this Sriya Shingal case because it was one of the landmark judgment. Uh, issues were raised on the section 66A of the IT Act, and uh, in it, uh, the uh, landmark judgment was made, and uh, it uh, said that uh, article 191 it basically safeguard the article 191 and the court kind of differentiated between discussion advocacy and incitement and the court different uh, basically said that what can be comes at a uh, freedom of speech uh, define the boundary that what is come what can come in the freedom of speech and what will come as the hate speech so in shira shingle case court basically defined a boundary of a hate speech and a free speech and uh, also in this uh, arub bhuvan versus state of assam case was there and in this case the court held that a mere act cannot be punished unless an individual restored to violence so this case was done in a uh, Assam. So we, until they, he, an individual is restored to violence or inciting any other person to violence. So if someone is inciting, it made a uh, clause that if someone is inciting any other person to violence, then only that will be committed under hate speech. So mm, the, this was all about this uh, hate speech, and uh, we must have to say that uh, we we are giving like proper education we are given so so that this hate speech thing can go on and also we have to cases of hate speech can be addressed through alternative dispute mechanism or adr we know that alternative dispute resolution we have to because the courts are overburdened and uh, negotiation should be needed so we have to make sure that alternative dis uh, dispute resolution is there so these kind of things which through which we can overcome this hate speech so moving on with the next news